this story. Okay, let's go. My name is Dean Baquet. I'm the executive editor of the New York Times. The New York Times at 40th and 8th Avenue. Let me say right now what is clear to everyone in this room. Dean has pretty much more journalistic experience than anybody else around. Hey, it's Dean. Passionate is the first word that comes to mind. Intelligence. He's got a buoyant personality. Sound news judgment. He's an optimistic, up, kind of sunny guy. And a dozen and a half other things. And that kind of radiates to people around him. Congratulations. He's extremely good at rallying the troops, and he's extremely good at getting people focused on a big project. His sense of like what a good story is, and what is newsworthy, and how dogged people should be. And he's very good at getting people to look at the big picture, to try to take the focus away from granular, you know, smaller things that don't matter as much. I remain deeply excited by stories, by coverage, by talking to reporters, by the pursuit of the big story. Dean has so much hard-won experience in journalism. Because he's at heart a reporter's reporter. He is a newsman. And because I think he's assimilated that experience into this set of principles that, you know, are always kind of his North Star. He will take a piece and he'll kind of punch it from various angles and see how it withstands. He's able to move with incredible confidence. He and the, the former uh, top editor at the Washington Post had a long-standing relationship and keeping an eye on each other. Dean's the man, right? He's revered. Is respected by everybody in many industries. I think that everybody who is in that level of uh, leadership looks at Dean in awe. He has brilliantly steered us through the most intense news environment of our lifetimes. This is a walkout of reporters and copy editors. You know, there are a lot of crises happening around here when he came into this job. The question was, how was he gonna handle? To be the executive editor of The Times is to take on the world every single day. We're undergoing the greatest changes we've ever seen in the industry. Dean was really willing to embrace a digital strategy. I think that that was key to how the times ended up changing. It's a lot of circumstances that are really uncertain when you're trying to make decisions. I think we have to try things and we have to sort of push some of the boundaries of how we've done things as long as you hold on to your moral core. Like it's true that the times should also have an audio department that is thriving and maybe a video department that is thriving. And there's nothing more noble than representing people who want to understand government, want to understand how to live their lives. He is willing to try new things, but he is an old school reporter. And I think that combination was vital to why he was so successful. A lot of the pressures in the past of the New York Times were economic. I actually think the New York Times has turned the corner on those. I think that he led the Times during a remarkable period in history. I don't think it's an overstatement to say that no one did more to save the New York Times than that man. I'm actually starting a new program to work with local journalists, which I think, frankly, is the biggest crisis in journalism, the decline of local news organizations and their ability to, to hold power to account, to cover the nitty-gritty life of American cities. And I hope in my new venture, which is to, to create a fellowship program for young journalists around the country, that I can, I can help with that. The story that I would say stands out most for me was the Harvey Weinstein story. During our final series of confrontations with Harvey Weinstein, Dean walked into a conference room where Megan and I were on the phone with Harvey. I was deeply involved in starting and editing along with some terrific reporters and editors. Dean was able to cut through and say, uh, you know, your time is up. We need the material that you're going to deliver to us. And it changed the national conversation. It helped provoke the Me Too movement. I also take a, a tremendous amount of pride in running the paper at the time the 1619 Project was started, which I also think became larger than a newspaper story and became something that changed the national conversation in that case about race and history. You all have won three Pulitzer Prizes this year. Dean may be the finest editor this 171-year-old institution has ever known. It's just been an honor to, to be at the paper while he's been running it. He gave me my career at the New York Times. I'm incredibly grateful to him. He has been a remarkable executive editor. It's been a joy over 
25 years working with you. And so I want to thank Dean for leading us through it with joy and optimism, even at really difficult moments. Congratulations, Dean, for receiving the Mirror Award. I'm very proud of you. Dean, congratulations on the Mirror Award. Congratulations, Dean. Congratulations. I'm proud of you, buddy. I'm really thankful for this award. Um, I'm not somebody who's pursued awards, even though I've won some awards, but they do give you a chance to sit down and think about your career and talk to your friends, and, and I'm really thankful for this.